All right, we can get going here. Okay, cool. <laughs> Crazy color BB-8 head look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me let me share my screen and we'll go through yep. it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so so before, we'll make, we'll make the comment that we, we were talking about before. So I mean, yeah, for everybody that's going to be joining afterwards and watching this after. Yep. Uh, this is based off of the Vulcanist Max, the Smart Wrap, uh, Smart Core Aluminum, um, and a couple of other printers, i3s, of course. Everybody deserves their uh, respect there. Definitely. And this is just our our compilation build of all those different printers and our some of our ideas. Yeah. It's a bit of a hybrid, but we've taken probably some of the, the better ideas from what we've experienced and um, come across over, over a time and, and try and enforce, infuse them into one printer. Yeah, and then for everybody who doesn't know, um, my name is Shai, and uh, one of the person building the printer, and then Colin, yep. the other one on the online here in the UK, and then we got Vincent, hopefully might join us later, he's out in Texas. So hopefully we'll do more of these, and hopefully do them live if this works, and I don't have so much technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, apologies for that, guys, if you're listening. All right, let me find the share again. Yeah, it's had quite a few um, evolutions as we've gone through building. Uh, the, uh, with, with there being three of us, as we've built roughly around the same time, uh, it's been very helpful to one another to sort of come across issues one of us might find and, uh, and another one of us might miss. So between us, really, we've got quite a, a, a successful printer. But obviously, because of the evolution, our our, our bomb right now is a little bit of a mess, which is why we're trying to clean it up for you guys, just so to make it as easy as possible. You buy the parts, you build the printer, you're on your way. Yep. And um, let me get through here. So hopefully it's clear for those watching it, but uh, I'm just going to copy the – we know that all the extrusion measurements are right. Uh, yeah. At least these ones on the right side, I think, not the ones on the left. Because we know these Yeah, are I think we possibly need to remove the version one stuff for now. Well, I have just what I'm just gonna do is gonna copy and paste into the new spreadsheet here. Yeah, cool. And then I'll, I'll clean all the rest of these up later. But for now, uh, where is it? Yeah, so you're, you're, you're getting the early version of the finalized bomb if you're following this video because we should pretty much get 90% of what we need on it here sorted. Yep, I agree. Just as a side note, I feel this needs mentioning. We've mentioned it many a time on the Facebook page, but just go careful when you're ordering your uh, 2020 extrusion that you get a six mil gap uh, in the profile. Uh, myself and Shay didn't. We assumed they were pretty much standard and we only got five mil gap, which has caused a lot of hurdles, not hurdles that are in, insurmountable, but a lot of hurdles and, and have personally made our builds a little bit harder than Vincent's. But um, to make life easy on yourself, look for that six mil gap stuff. I just have the comments there. Cool. All right, so that, that's it for the for the extrusions. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'll do the rods next because that's the easy one. Yeah. What was it here? Further down, isn't it? Yep, right here. Yep, we, as far as I'm aware, Shay, they were right, weren't they, Then measurements for the rods? We didn't adjust them at all, I don't believe. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the lead screw's only one, so I'll get that one in a second here. Yeah, the lead, the lead screw is something we debated early on quite a lot, wasn't it? Whether we should go uh, a wider lead screw. We were thinking possibly 10 or 12. But to get the build done, we decided to stick with the 8mm lead screws. And to be fair, I would say now they, they, they suffice. It's not to say that uh, a wider lead screw would be better, but right now they suffice. I'm already printing, and to be fair... The results are great, so I personally would stick with the MA. 
and then we're and then we're gonna say that the the length is 500 mil right because you cut yours to yes. 500 yeah i've ordered uh, a couple of extras for uh, the future at 500 because that's what i'll be using on later okay. version. And it, it just makes it cheaper for the build as well, guys. When you start getting in the realms of 600 mils or or meat or 1,000 mils, you, you're talking uh, a lot more expensive. So we've done our best to, 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 to make it as cheap as possible as well, really. Yeah, that's we'll see that as we get to the whole nuts and bolts stuff. All right, I'm just trying to pick some of the, some of the easier stuff that we know so we can get all this out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, I think most of this let me at least get these here well, let's do the let's do the steppers real quick yeah that's an easy one so i don't have the the model i can pull it up quick if i go to my uh paypal or my ebay uh yeah i can i i can actually i've got it right here shay if you just hold unless you want to copy and paste but yeah I mean, I'll, I'll copy and paste from here okay cool yeah i mean for those just to, again for those watching the um we we spent a lot of time debating on the difference uh NEMA sizes uh, in the 17 class, but yes. you know how many ounce, how much torque. Uh, I mean, all different kinds of debates on the on the shaft versus it's the shaft or round shaft. And I think after much debate, we finally settled on on these uh, steppers. Yeah, two amp steppers, weren't they? Yeah, and I'll, I'll put the link in there since I have it here. Make sure I get the, the right part number here. Yeah. Now the D-shaped uh, shafts, which is uh, a major thing. I when we first got started, I found an equivalent two amp stepper and ordered, and I ended up sending them back because the simple reason is you're never going to get an adequate bind on on a round shaft with a pulley. In my in my mind, you need you need um, you need a D-shaped shaft basically. <laughs> I'm just trying to find the actual model number here. Um, the model number, I can tell you that, is... Funny, it doesn't say anywhere here. No, it doesn't. I, I've got like a leaflet that came with mine, and it's got it on there. Okay, I got mine too. I have three more here, as I know. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're trying to do for you guys. Uh, joking aside, the amount of extra parts we've ordered is ridiculous. We could probably build four printers, which is why we're trying to stop for you guys. Uh, I'm sure the expense of this printer is going to go way down compared to what we've we've paid for our parts because we've got numerous extras. Um, I do feel that this will be a very cheap printer for the size once we get the bomb sorted. So. Uh, hang fire, guys, and, and soon you'll be ready to order your stuff. Yeah, hey, I got the, I got the leaflet, but there's no um, there's no part number on there. I mean, okay. I got the I got the part number from here, but so for anybody watching again, I, I don't know what the manufacturer is. I know in the U.S. this comes from Steppers Online. Yeah, same as mine. Okay, so maybe that's just their their brand. Um, but the the most important part is look for this model number. Yeah, that's the one you need. Yeah, that's exactly the same as mine. And I, I put quantity five. Um, that'll get you started on your your X, Y, Z, and your extruder. If you are planning on going dual, then then buy six. Yes, because they're harder to um, come by on their own. I've noticed. Well, you pay through the note by a single one. So, knowing what I know now, I would have ordered six or seven or eight uh, for the upgrades in time to come. But just make your own decision on what you feel you you want to achieve by the end. Yep. Agreed. Um, and these are about eleven dollars, eleven to twelve dollars a piece. So they're actually one of the cheaper NEMAs as well. Yes. But um, as far as I've noticed so far, obviously it's still early on in a in a step of motor's life, but uh, we're getting great results, so they seem to be working completely fine. Yep. And let me take uh and hear the linear motions. do feel they're just sort of talking about the build while Shay's doing that um it was it is an intimidating build to start with when you look at the bomb and, and you look at everything else uh, the best way to target it really is just to do it in stages for me i was like oh 
uh, this is going to be hard work. And I was a bit nervous about starting to order parts in case I didn't see it through. But I then came across Vincent and Shay and we sort of got a group going uh, and it just became infinitely easier. You guys uh, in on the Facebook group are going to have numerous resources at your hands, us, us free for a start and everyone else doing a build. So it should be far less uh, intimidating. But all I would say really, start off, order your extrusion, order your rods uh, and your and your bolts and, and your um, connectors and go from there. Don't attempt to sort of try and take it all on board all at once just do it in stages and you'll find it, it it's not actually that hard to build at all yeah it looks like just, just a quick part we have uh at least two two people on so it looks like bill and mcflame oh hi guys uh, bill says he loves your your uh, pink pb8 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see? Yeah, I've got to just show you again. Uh, this main reason I, I built this printer is for um, helmets, basically. I'm a big cosplay fan, and I'm building a life-size BB-8. I'm part of like a BB-8 group, blah, 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 shameless plug. Um, and yeah, uh, so I've got it all printed. I've just got to construct it. But yeah, uh, and I don't know if you can see. Uh, just show you a bit of quality. I have posted pictures, but this is a 0.2 layer height on our printer, so... It shows you what you, it's capable of doing. Yeah, and just uh, where did, did that, I, I know McFlame you had asked about the uh, the extrusion location, where to buy them. Uh, Misumi, I guess I would recommend in the in the U.S. Uh, call yeah, in the U.K. Uh, KJN uh, Aluminium Profiles, it's called. Uh, to, they supply all the printer builders in the UK and Europe. So the extrusion is so cheap. You probably, when I first priced up with a lot of companies, it's like 160 quid. I think I ended up paying about 60 or 70 from these guys for the exact same stuff. Admittedly, I bought the five mil stuff, but they do stock the six mil and it's exactly the same price. That was just my error really. All right. So the, just getting back to the so LM LM ten you use we have eight as far as I remember right four on the X four on the Y yeah so where we're we looking so I've lost the plot okay yep LM yeah yeah that's right eight two four six eight yeah eight LM tens and for um 12s just remember to look for the longer ones guys because there are shorter ones that l is important on, yeah. on the end of that because i didn't i bought the shorter ones and then turned up with them read by the longer ones well i mean just like curious do we know if there's any benefits to the long ones or no uh i haven't seen any yet but uh to be fair i don't think i did enough prints on the shorter ones so i feel the shorter ones would be fine um uh, but to be fair I've gone the uh, I've gone the, the longer one route. Yeah, so I'll leave my, my shorter ones for now, and we'll see. But for now, I guess we'll make the recommendation to go with the long ones, since we at least you and Vince have those. Yes, that's correct. And I have my longer ones coming. So. Okay. What's next? Uh, the bomb here. So the 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 bearings we didn't use the six twenty fours we used primarily six of the F six of four ZZs right yeah the bearings is a bit of a joke for us guys because we've ordered so many different bearings it's hard to remember which ones we've actually used yeah um, are we talking bearings here for the belt are these the belt bearings yeah they are yeah so these are flanged bearings obviously the F denotes that um, uh, and they. We was a bit skeptical with them, but they're great. So definitely go with with, with these. Yeah, I mean, let me let me count them real quick. Um, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. sixteen. I make it. Yeah, sixteen. But you may want to order an even twenty, guys, because uh i've incorporated a belt tensioner and you'd need another four for them so if you go in even 20 you're okay but the the belt tensioner really is only optional yeah i just put it on there i mean i'm probably going to do the belt tensioner too and then we'll just settle it at a 20. yeah for sure. so i mean maybe i'll just put on here 20. yeah that makes sense it won't hurt to have a few extras
Yeah, I mean, these are pretty cheap, so it doesn't hurt to have extras. Um, the 608 ZZs. Uh, is they, only were two. The, they were for the 10 mil, weren't they? 10 mil smooth rods. Is that right? No, no, for the lead screw. That's, that's oh, for the, yes, for the sorry. Yeah, lead screw. yeah, lead screw. So it's just two, yeah. Okay, uh, let me see here. And then, yeah, I mean, guys, for we'll go through and we'll have links, and then we'll we'll build a description actually where the part is actually used, because uh, it's it's hard sometimes to understand where you use a 608 versus a 604 if you're not familiar with this stuff. So we'll detail out where each part is used. Definitely, uh, yeah, because we it, for for us guys, it was very vague, uh, uh, and we've sort of had to work a lot of this stuff out but for you it should be relatively simple by the time we get this finished let me get so the next one here is the bell it's worth mentioning on the coupler to make sure there's several types the slightly cheaper ones are ones where you just have like a a grommet screw that that binds against your lead screw really you probably want ones that are slightly different i don't know what they're called Shay, do you um no and i'll um they're 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 technically called clamping oh here we go there, 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 there. so as you can see from this uh from this picture they have two extra bolts to to, to clamp so uh we felt that this was a far superior design so we've gone with these it's not to say the others won't work but while you're ordering it it's best to order the, the best ones you can All right, and then the so clamp the those are two doesn't have our extra GT two belt. I ordered five meters. No. Five meters is just enough, I feel, because I think it's about two forty per belt. I measured it out at roughly. Um, yeah. So if you order five meters, you've got enough. But there's there's no room to 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 cut it in the wrong place at five meters. So just be wary of that. Cut you cut in half though. Uh, yeah, you can. That's the, that's the common size you can find them in five meter lengths yeah um all right let me see if there's any other thing before we get into the nuts washers and all those little things it's a minefield <laughs> yeah i know i'm trying to avoid the minefield till later <laughs> yeah hopefully we get through it soon here um yeah none of this stuff yet and then we'll get into the ways extruder as well in a bit yeah all right so i guess we can talk about maybe some of the the electronics yeah i agree Driver stuff like that. Um, let me see where I have it here. Yeah. So we went uh, slightly different routes. Um, Shay and Vincent went the ramp through. Uh, I my i3 has an MKS base, so I went that route. To be fair, there's not much difference between them, it's just for convenience. Um, but depending on what you choose, uh, it makes no odds. To be fair, just what you're more comfortable with. It might be worth noting, Shay, as well, for these guys. On the MKS base, they want version 1.4. Uh, three. Sorry? Three, 1.3, because 1 1.4 doesn't have the drivers in it. No, 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 you're thinking of MKS Gen. MKS Gen's a different board. The 1.4 MKS oh. Gen doesn't have the things built in. Okay. Uh, my, my MKS is a 1.4 with the drivers. I checked, I was looking into that last night. Make another here, so version. Because there's about three different versions of the board for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm sure people out there know, but I don't. Yeah, if you have a if you have a link handy, you want to send to me, I'll, I'll include it here. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, if if you have the ramps or GT two five sixty or any other board where you need the drivers, I think we're all sticking with the Allegros right now, just because those will come on the MKS. We will likely look at DRVs and TMC drivers later. Um, but I think for now we're just sticking with the Allegros, so that's really five or six if you need uh, dual extrusion. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. you, you do not need drivers if you have MK space. <laughs> yes, of course. But then you're bound to the 
the A4988. So base that as well around your decision whether you go ramps or MKS base. Excuse me one second, guys. Hello. Yeah, I'll go on here okay. with phone. So we got the Sorry about that, guys. We got a one E three D C V six. I just put clone. I mean, of course, you can buy a genuine if you want. Yes. Uh, mixed results, really. Vincent struggled a little bit. Uh, I haven't at all. So again, just what you're, you're comfortable with. If you're used to using the clones, uh, clones, I don't see re what a reason why not to this time. Yeah, and apparently it's all down to the heat break. So. Of course. Yeah, if you want the best of both worlds, get yourself a clone and buy yourself a genuine heat break and, and you'll be fine. I'll just let me all in here. That's what Hello. Hello. Uh, and then so we got the and then we're all going with the volcano hot ends. So they actually call it the eruption pack. So you have the you buy the you can buy the volcano as one kit or you can buy the V6 clone and then buy an eruption pack separately. Yes. So I suppose really the Ed version six clone is only really if you're going uh, a normal size nozzle. We decided big printer big nozzle because you're going to be doing large prints so we went with the volcano pack didn't we yeah we did but I, like for me i got a really good deal on the volcano packs so i bought the volcano pack separately and then i just bought the, the chinese clone yeah same as me all i all i really bought was the the nozzle and the heat uh, heat sink uh, what do you call it heat block yep and then thermistors usual 100ks aren't they i think yeah, so I mean, I'll put in here. Uh, it's actually two, is it not? Because it's one for the heat bed. Uh, yes. Depending on that, what type of heat, the bed, heat bed comes uh, with it. Yeah, usually it does. I don't think there's one that doesn't, unless you're unlucky like yourself. <laughs> no, mine's actually intentional. So mine's actually going to be used, and I'll get that into a second here. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, All right, so let's get to the, the heat bed real quick. Yes. So I'm in one heat bed, but um, just this. Yeah, there's um, different thoughts in the group, isn't there, really, about the heat bed? Uh, myself and Vincent just came across a really cheap deal on AliExpress for a 300 by 300 um, DC heat bed. Now, it was very cheap. It was like $20. Um, now, obviously, that's a lot smaller than the 40 by 40 build bed that we, we wanted to go. But I found myself that it works completely fine. You give it a few more minutes to, to heat up the aluminium and it's fine. But Shay has gone a true 40 by 40 jewel, haven't you, Shay? But yeah. to get into that, it's quite complicated. So uh, <laughs> just go with what you think, really. But a 30 by 30 will be sufficient. But I would advise maybe if you're comfortable with a uh, mains, uh, get a main supplied one. Yeah, so I mean, this is you know maybe I'll I'll break this actually separately and I'll I'll put in a separate category tone because there's just several options here depending on what you go. Yeah, definitely. And then it'll actually change what uh, relay you buy and potentially some of the wiring that you do. Yeah, because it's all different depending on what option you choose. Yeah, so let me let me do it this way. Okay. One thing you do have to be careful on really, like just getting into the relays quickly is don't buy the cheap Chinese ones because they're just not rated like they say they are and they don't work and you'll you'll have a fire in no time. Yeah, I mean I paid three dollars for my relay. That's probably the most expensive component I bought. Yeah. For me, All right, so being from the UK, I uh, I will get into relays in a minute, but I'll I'll show you the route I went later. All right, so we got the so the option one is really the thirty by 
30. Here's the PCP, right? It's not silicone, he been? Uh, uh, no, silicon. Okay. And it's an, uh, a DC, DC. It's a DC, sorry, DC, a uh, 12 volt. That's what I meant, meant, meant to say. It's a 12 volt heat bed. Yeah, I'll let it here too is the, the heater cartridge. Oh, yeah. They're pretty much standard. I think you can get some fancy ones, but clones of what I've used and they seem to be working fine. I think you'll find, guys, that when you build this, you get the build going and then you'll find your change stuff as, as it goes on. Uh, you might upgrade to slightly better parts or whatnot, but all the stuff we're putting up on here will get you going to a decent extent. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, yeah, DC DC relay. Uh, for you might want to, yeah, okay. Twelve volt relay. Okay, hold on, I'm doing it right now. Oh, what's the UK? Uh, Forty volts. Uh, yeah. I, I use, I just want to mention this because it's quite a big thing for me. I got a cheap Chinese relay, completely useless, got too hot to even touch within about 60 seconds. Um, I would go automotive relay. You can get them really cheap, three or four pounds in the UK. I imagine they're just as cheap in the States uh, and they're completely fine. Uh, so I use a 12 volt auto 40 amp relay. Oh yeah, you might want to put your ampage down on your relay show. Uh, yeah, because what they recommend is well, we did a lot of research, didn't we, Shay? Looking into the relays, and they recommend you go three times what your bed needs, so you don't get the extra heat dissipation, uh, extra heat going for it from the volt drop. Yeah, I can even see what mine is. <laughs> yeah, let me look up what mine is real quick. What's what's yours? Just I put it on here, sixty or hundred? Sixty, yeah. Oh no, sorry. The the one I ended up using is forty. Okay. So really, I've only gone double, but that was because I could only get a forty. If I had a choice, I'd go sixty. Let me reload real quick. No yeah, worries. so I put I put for mine basically mine's a a mains powered one twenty volt. Uh, 40 by 40 dual zone bed uh, and get one of them obviously from uh, mine's from Kinevo. Yeah. And then I use the, an, opto, an opto relay, which I think is, is just a fancy way to say it's a solid state relay. Yeah. And and this is one thing I wouldn't scrimp on as you relay, especially if you go in mains, make sure you, you don't just buy a cheap knockoff, make sure you get a, a, a decent, brand from whatever country you're from uh, and use that yeah and mine's only a, a 25 amp because mine's a mains power so i don't yes. need as much yeah yeah just mention that that mains you don't really have to cover the okay. um three times theory <laughs> as i like to call it yeah just for clarity these are all uh solid state relays no mechanical relays yeah but you're not hearing you shouldn't be hearing any clicking right <laughs> yeah all right um all right i think yeah. that's it so for the the heat bed let me add one to mine because mine actually intentionally did not come with a thermistor so i mean all i'm here to be fair guys you probably like myself i've ordered so many clones for your other printers or i3s or whatever you've probably got umpteen thermistors hanging around i know i did yeah so in my case mine's uh, an m3 stud thermistor yeah is that screw in yeah, so mine will actually screw into my aluminum plate. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, I mean that's that's there's different options here. I mean you can certainly I think you can use that one too if you use yours, but you just have to drill a hole in the middle of your plate. Yes. But your but your your bed came with a thermistor, right? Yeah. So admittedly, I'm not getting a true read of temperature of my bed. I'm getting the temperature of the silicon pad. But to be fair, I've worked it out. I used a thermometer and all that business, and it's about seven or eight degrees out. So I'm just living with that. I just know to set my temperature seven or eight degrees more than what I want. Yep, and that's that's a normal deviation. 
Okay. All right. Um, so we've been voting for long, and it's seven oh three. So should we should we get real quick into the uh, nuts and bolts? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we have to. So I have, there has to be some way to put this all together, right? Okay. So, I mean, I'll start off with the the easy ones here, right? I mean, we definitely know. Make some room here. We definitely know M4s and M5s, right? That's that's there's for certain there. So, so yeah, M5s, eight mils, that's what I meant, not M8s. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely M4 25s. Yes, because they yeah. were for the carriages, if I remember rightly. Yep. And then M4. What do we use? Eight, eight mils. Eight. Okay. I mean, I have. So I mean, mine's a, a mishmash. I have some eight mil in mine. I have some parts where ten millimeters worked. Yeah, I'm the same. I would. What I would say. Is quantity you want 100 M58s and anywhere around 10 to 20 of 10s and 12s, I think. I, I mean, I, I would, I would only disagree and say 50 just to have extra. I mean, the the cost okay. difference is it's maybe a dollar or two. Yeah, yeah. Get more than you need, guys. It's the way forward when it comes to your bolts and your fixtures. Yeah. Hang on, lost my mouse. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put it, and then you, you never know, you might print up other parts from Thingiverse or somewhere else that does need M512s. Yeah, to be fair, I think I probably used about three or four of them, but you don't want to want them and then not have them, to be fair. And they're yeah, not expensive if you're ordering from Ali or eBay. So this is the stuff, guys, that we need to, and we're going to spend a bit of time getting right because there's no end of sizes that we've ordered that we've not used. <laughs> there's, there's, there's me with my grinder cutting 60 mil screws down to 12 mil and all sorts, so it's just been chain wreck. Um, so we will get it right. Yeah, and I think for the the X, the Y carriages, those are actually M3s, are they? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me look on, let me look on the original bomb real quick and see what he even said. I don't think there is any M3s on here at all. Yeah, it, it's yeah, there isn't. Uh, it's quite hard as well, guys, because some of you might choose to go a different carriage than the standard carriage, really. So uh, it's hard to get this exactly right. But if you're going with the the standard carriage and they are M3s, what are they? Sixties. No. Well, no, hold on. Not, no, no. For the the X end nuts, the parts on the on the far left and right of the of the of the X gantry. Oh yeah, no, they were twenty fives. Were they twenty fives? They were twenty fives, but the twenty fives were too long. Okay, so twenties. Um, yeah, because we uh, just a quick bit of background. We changed the part after I'd built mine, so it's slightly thinner, so you don't need as long a bolt. Oh, we don't need I mean, 100. I mean, probably I mean, there's there's only like 10 of them or nine on each one, and that's really the only set of M3s that we use. But I mean, I've, I found the M3s usable in other places, though. Yeah, exactly. The map times I've sort of just looked through my, my stock of bolts and, uh, and stuff and just used what I've had. Um, so, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's quite a lot of M3 I found. So, yeah, I would go 100 M3 as long as I mean, you're not paying extortionate money for them. Yeah, and we're sticking for the the twenties. I'm trying to think if you need twenty fives anywhere. I think on the and then on, on the NEMA steppers, I think those in my case. So you have, I know you have nuts on yours, but I think mine's are actually M three sixteens. Yes, that's right. I think I used twenties, and I had to put a, a makeshift nut to, to 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 cope with that extra length. And, and those you only need, I think, sixteens. Four. Uh, four, eight. Well, yeah, sixteen. Because yeah, your extruder assembly is a whole different kettle of fish, isn't it? Yeah, I'm leaving that for yeah. now. So, yeah. Um. Right, so with the, and then for the the, uh, the the brass nut for the lead screw. Yes. Those I think were twenties as well. Uh, yes. I'll double check mine real quick. 
Yeah, me too. Hold on, where's my card? Then? Oh, mine were twenty fives. Twenty fives. No, twenties. Twenties enough because I think again this is a part you modded slightly different to mine, Shay. Yeah, I did. Uh, the the funnel part, the uh, that's a countersunk. Yeah, just to update you guys, there's a lot of stuff on mine and probably Vincent Quinter, which isn't the latest revision. Shay uh, is started a little bit later on in his build because uh, he was dealing with all the the bombs and the and the on shape stuff. Um, he has all the latest revisions, so his will be slightly different. So we'll we'll give you uh, the latest revision stuff to buy, of course. Yeah, so let's see here. So what's the, what's the next part of some of the nuts? Okay, so let's go to the nuts here. Definitely need M4 nuts. Yeah. M3. Again, I mean, for people watching, I'm just I'm putting a hundred here because the price difference really between between fifty and a hundred is is about a dollar or two at most. Yeah, and it really doesn't hurt to have extra of these. Yeah, because you'll find that you uh, at somewhere at some point you'll need some spaces, uh, and it's just nice to have a few extra. Uh, so as far as the nuts, so in some cases I used M3 nylocks as well though. Actually, I mean, all of my M3s are all nylocks though. Okay. Uh, I didn't, and I haven't had any issues, but nylocks would probably be a better choice. But again, I think it's preference. So yeah. either or, I think is completely fine. But if you, if you, if you want to be sure, then the nylocks are the best route. Can we just put nylock on here then? Yeah, I would. Oh no, actually, what? probably not because if you if you end up using any for spaces or anything like that, you're not going to be able to use nylocks, are you? Uh, yeah, it's not ideal. So let me think. I wonder if I should put in another row in here for nylocks as well. Yeah, it's not going to hurt. People aren't going to complain that they've got a hundred M3 nuts that they haven't used. But they will. There'll be somewhere that you'll need either or. And then the M the M four, I know definitely the nylocks don't fit in many places. And the M fours, the the only argument I had, I actually remixed the uh, the rod the rod clamp to actually hold an M four square nut. I made it I made it wider, so it actually might hold a four nut. Yeah, I, I just used regular nuts on these, and they they held fine. But like I say, uh, as far as revisions go, Shay's on the latest revision, so. Yeah, so should we, should, if I, when I did the part in the on shape document, just to make sure that everybody gets the right one, yeah. should, it, should it be the M4 square nuts? Because it's such a pain to remove the the, the regular nuts. Okay. I know uh, they're, they're cheaper, but. Yeah. Yeah, go square. People will figure out, the guys are going to be building this, are going to realize, okay, I don't have to use a square, I can use a regular if I choose to. They'll figure that out themselves. Yeah, let me just make a comment quick, so. All right, and then for the, the idler bolts. I mean, I have... I have M four thirty five and M four thirty, I think. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Yeah. They're really hard to tell because they're sunk inside the part. The, and I, and I, I made a note somewhere, but I'm pretty sure they're M four M four thirty and M four thirty five. Forty for me. Forty. 45 but your yours are um your your carriage your y carriage is thinner isn't it yes 
So go with yours. Okay. Because I remember rightly, they're well and truly countersunk on the bolt side, aren't they? By quite a bit. Right. Right. Four. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as you can see, guys, we've gone through so many revisions of this, that, and the other. Um, we've done hey. a lot of the hard work. <laughs> And to be fair, I mean, I think we're probably still going to revise some of these soon. Of course, of course. We give more time just just to try to reduce some of this cumbersome hardware because you really shouldn't need so many different types of nuts, and screws, and bolts. Exactly. We we to be fair, when we when we started off with our our list, there was way more as well, wasn't there? Of stuff that we bought that we've just not even touched. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, and then for the here, so uh, explain that to myself. Um, and then for the the bed, the bed screws. I know you guys went with M threes, I believe, right? I'm going with M fives. I use fours, M fours. Okay. So that was down to personal preference. Um, again, for me, it was what I had to hand. So, but fives would be better, I feel. So I'll put on here too. In my case, they're M five twenty fives. Yeah. And I mean, you really, only need five. Yeah. Pack of five or ten would be fine. Uh, so therefore, you also need to have five nuts as well, which I still don't buy. Uh, yeah, just for the bed, because obviously we haven't covered the extrusion uh, bolts yet, have we? Uh, no, you're right. Uh, well, so the extrusion nuts, the extrusion nuts are these, aren't they? The M5, 10, 8, 10, 12? Mm, no, I'm talking about the, to go in the extrusion, the, the nuts, not the bolts. Oh yeah, so that's just the hammer, the T nuts. Yeah. Okay. Or the Rollins. I mean, I I've bought probably about three hundred of these so far, and I think I have. I bought, let's see, I bought three hundred and fifty, and I probably have about a hundred left. Have you used as many as that? <laughs> well, to be fair, there are some of them that they don't have anything in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah to be fair i have as well i think i started off with 150 and i'm down to about 20 so i don't think 100's enough if you order two packs of of 100 i think you're, you're pretty much okay right, so. uh, extrusion t-nuts or roll-ins i myself i actually prefer the roll-ins now after having to use them but it's whatever you're used to I wonder if the roll-ins that we have that are easier to uh, easy to put into the. They are. In. You just you just because I've tried them in my i3. You literally just push them in with your finger and they're in. Okay. I like the fact that you, they then stay in place. Do you know okay. what I mean? That's what I liked about the roll-ins. Should we just should we just put on here? Just put roll-ins and that's it. Uh, well, you're a fan of the T nuts, though, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, right, okay. Roll-ins is then. Let me just put uh because the rollins we've actually used are the six mil rollins. Yeah. Yeah, because when you've got a part with like six or seven bolts to it and then you're putting on the T-nuts to then get them all in position to actually lock it into place and then to check that they've actually turned and you've not just tightened it to the part is quite tricky. So that's why I prefer the roll as well. Yeah, so let me see. I, I'm 
trying to cover. I know I got a question before somebody messaged me that about the the printed parts. I think we're gonna hold off, at least in this discussion, on the printed parts. Yeah, I think we need to do a separate discussion, don't we? Yeah, I, mainly because I want to make sure that the in on shape that the the printed part assembly has all the right printed parts in there. And then two, yeah. I want to make sure that that until the final sizes and then that we get the, the quantity right. As far as stuff though, people wanted to start printing. Uh, what would you recommend, Shay? Uh, so I mean, I would say the the printed parts plate. If you go in the on shape document, um, let me. I can put a link in the bomb real quick here, just to at least get people started. And I mean, you can certainly get started on the the idler mounts, the Y carriages, the yeah. the XY level the bed. Basically. Yeah, all, everything on that's everything that's actually on the bed itself too. The motor mounts. Yeah. Uh, the, the power supply mounts, the ramps mounts, those, I mean, I actually mean the fan mounts, I would say almost everything is fine. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's a good idea. Uh, my build was while I was debating how I was going about it, but, uh, I printed all the parts out. Don't get me wrong, I, I've got a box full of parts that I haven't used from all the revisions, but right now we're pretty much there uh, obviously there will be some in time to come but if you wanted to start prison pr printing start with your xy level uh, and you can you, you see yourself what you think is likely is going to change and what's not just print with what what you want to go forward with yeah so I'll, I'll put a link in here the other the other part we got to put in here is all the different thingiverse parts that we've used yes that's that's another minefield guys we've <laughs> yeah so, I mean, I think I'm going I'm to put a link in here, and I think we're going to build this out over the week. Um, and then we'll probably do a, another Hangout next week as far as yeah. exactly which printed parts to start printing out. But uh, I would say for now, this link that I'm going to put in here about the printed parts, you can probably just start with those. Yeah, agreed. I mean, that, that'll, that'll take you easily a good week to, to print those out. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to get to updating it this week as far as which, which parts are actually in that assembly. Yeah. I just just for everybody in the video here, I'll, I'll move the the page over so everybody can see as soon as it loads. Yeah. And it was uh, yeah, you're fine, guys. As well, this isn't like the absolute have to um, ways. You'll you, you'll change stuff yourself as you build, and you might might revise stuff yourself. So, except that there will be revisions still to come. Uh, but yeah, the best part, best way really is just get going, get started. Otherwise, you'll you'll be waiting indefinitely if you want a final finished printer. Yeah, here, let me get this link here. So this, this link for everybody watching, the link I'm going to put in here. Um, let me just make another section called printed parts. Quite easy to extract the STLs as well from Onshape. There's plenty of resources online that'll tell you how to do it. Yeah, I'll probably do a separate video just to walk through those. Yeah, and just to, to show everybody real quick, all this group. I mean, so it's when you when you download as an STL and you export them all, uh, and you choose the export option, you do get. Make sure to click this export parts as individual files. Uh, changes to fine. Yeah. And, okay. What will end up happening is you'll get one of each of these parts. So even though I have what I've tried to do is visualize, you know, that hey, you need two motor mounts, you need two of the idler blocks, you need uh, eight of the clamps, um, and then eight of the actual clamp clamping piece itself. So they and have to refer back to this to know how many to print of each, don't they? Basically. Yeah. Correct. I mean, until we until we spend time probably next week, I think going through the. Um, through all these printed parts and actually writing in there exactly how much of each one we need. Mm. So we'll, we'll do that next week. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'll, I, I put the link in there for this one right now. That's this printed parts here. And I'll just put a, I'll put in a note here, just quantities to come. Why well, Shay's writing that guys, you'll see there's a, a strange part sat at the back of that page. And uh, Shay decided to the gray part, bottom right. Uh, Shay, um, he designed a, a spacer guide 
um, you'd want to print two of those and they're worth their weight in gold it's a basically space in your extrusion and and where your parts actually sit along the extrusion uh, this made the build so much easier so definitely print yourself two of them off yeah and then um the drawings hopefully that we'll, we'll publish as pdfs and attach to this will help people follow along exactly we know where it's spaced 80 and 86. yeah exactly um and i mean that i just to, to be clear too i think they're they're rough numbers i mean they, they get you very close but i think you might find that you might have to move something just a tad over because of binding or because you're of course yeah your rods course. Exactly right so what i did is i used them all to these numbers and then i just slightly nudge them over a millimeter too, sometimes just to get rid of that binding. Sometimes it was just a case of undoing the bolts and tightening them back up again to get rid of the binding because it would move where it naturally needed to move. But yeah, that's your, that's your guide to start with. Yep, so we got about five minutes left. Um, I know the main parts we have to cover next time is really the Wade's extruder and all the rest of the Thingiverse printed parts. Yep. Uh, the Wade's that at least I used um, is, is a mashup of different parts um yeah a remix of a bracket a remix of the of the guy or the guidler and then uh thumb screws that i made so we'll, we'll go over. go on sorry yeah no so we'll, we'll go over that next week yeah to be fair you, you can't go wrong with any of the versions of the way but we've tried to to come up with one that suits this printer yep yeah and um the the tools and connectors i'll just hit on those real quick um well, and I'll put links as well. I mean, I would just say you need, you know, good set of quick connectors, spade connectors, uh, round screw connectors. Yeah. Um, I have packs that I bought of Amazon of all different kinds of connectors. Uh, we'll probably detail here in, in more specific. Yeah. I'll look at the actual Amazon label um, next week and then actually label what the connectors are called and what happened to get of each one. Yeah, because, guys, your wiring is important. You want a nice, neat machine because otherwise you'll find it's everywhere. Uh, but we can discuss that another time. Yeah, so I'll just add it here, wire sleeves. And then tools, I mean, just basic things like wire crimpers, driller screwdrivers, Allen key sets, soldering tools, ratcheting crimpers. Again, we'll, we'll put all the details there. But that's, that's good stuff to have on hand before you start to build. Um, otherwise, you find yourself ordering from Amazon, way over price stuff. Yeah, exactly, which is what we've had to do on a few occasions, isn't it, just to get the build continued. Yep, and then just to, one last thing we put on here, the, the corner brackets. Um, I know we have, we'll, we'll talk about the Thingiverse uh, three-way corner brackets next time. Yeah. But, but, I mean, I'll just put in here to be clear that the 2028 aluminum brackets, there, there's two versions of these corner brackets, for everybody knows. Um, i find the link real quick. There's the 2020 and 2028. Uh, even though you have 2020 extrusions, the 2028s are actually a lot thicker. A lot better, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and I used mostly 2020s except for a couple parts. Oh, right. You just stuck with the 2020s, did you? Yeah. And then the, the on the... Yeah, yeah here. On, on the, what I did on the, on the bed, I used 2028s. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out a number of the need of those because that's important to get ordered. I mean, I have a pack of 100. Wait, 150. No, I think 50. Not that one. I think about a pack of 50. Yeah, uh, we will get into to it, but uh, I've used a mashup of printed and metal corners, so uh, there's definitely options there. Yeah, no, I'm just going to put 50 pieces because I know it's definitely not 20. <laughs> They, they come usually in 50 or 20 or 15, 20 cents. Um, and that, that is, I mean, the bag of 50 is about $30, but I think it's definitely well worth it. You might be able to find a cube from China. Um, I think that's about it for now. Yeah, for the time run. All right, let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah, you can see Shay's build in the back there. Um, Halloween themed, isn't it, Shay? Uh, slightly. It's green and orange. So, <laughs> is the extrusion is what? What's it called? It's your black extrusion. What's it covered with? Uh, it's just black anodized. Oh, yeah, yeah, black. That's it. Um, it looks good. If you got an option, guys, go for the black. It looks far better. <laughs> yeah, and then just make sure you print all the outside pieces of black. Um, the inside pieces really doesn't matter in color. I think Vince has a whole myriad of colors. 
Um, if you want to just touch on real quick before we finish as far as what plastics to use, uh, Colin's got PLA. I have the majority of PETG with some PLA. Uh, Vince, I think, has got a majority of ABS and PLA. Yeah, for me, I've always printed in PLA and never had a, a, a problem, but I always print PLA at 40% infill, so I'm not going to get a, a problem with 40% infill. Yeah, and then all my parts as well, even PEG, are, are still four walls, four top, bottom, 40% infill. Yeah, same as me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make it on the, on the bottom just so it's there. Yeah, because if people are going to start to print stuff over the next week or two, it's quite a important um thing to remember that because otherwise you, you want your strength but yeah use whatever pla or or whatever plastic you're used to using guys as long as you know it, it's strong enough i use really cheap stuff from china it's like over here in the uk it's like seven pounds for a kilo uh, and I, i've always had great results i don't know if you can see my printer in the background there slightly um a plethora of colors uh union jack colors as i like to say <laughs> red <laughs> blue and white there's a bit of pink in there <laughs> don't ask me where that came from but it, it was cheap uh but yeah so it's so a go with what you know is is probably the advice I, I give to quite a lot of the build really yep agreed all right guys all right. Uh, i think we'll, we'll end it here at 7 30 cool and uh hopefully we'll do another session next week maybe one during the, the mid midweek if i can get one uh a non-shape specific session just to go through all the parts yeah, you're our resident expert on uh, shape, on shape. But guys, it's definitely a program to get you get your feet, uh, feet wet in. So have a look yourselves as well. Yeah, it's if you're building extra parts, nothing worthwhile. Uh, doing a non-shape makes it much easier. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. See you next time.